So in this lecture, we will discuss about how to use Colab to solve the TSP problem and the VRP problem. So let's first look at the TSP problem. When we use the notebook to solve the optimization problem, we need to introduce some solvers. Here we introduce a solver called IMIP, which indicates mixed integer program. There are multiple solvers. For example, the famous commercial solvers include let's see, Groovy, and then AMS, and so on. Okay. So here we introduce this MIP solvers because it is open source. So you can use this in anywhere when you solve the problem. Definitely, the open source solvers in terms of the performance is a little bit less than the commercial solvers, but still for classes or some small project, I think they are sufficient. So the first step, we need to install this package. And then remember the first note is the exclamation mark. This is to tell the system you need to execute some command line. Let's see this pip install. Typically, when you install some packages, you need to use pip install together with the package name. And then after you run the cell, you can see the Colab will automatically download this package from the server with its newest version. So currently, install the version which is 1.13.0. After it is successfully installed, you will see the last line successfully installed. Then we can formulate our optimization problem into the format which the solver can recognize. So let's see what should we do. The first step, we need to generate some input for this PSP problem. Let's see, we consider random 10 points on the map here we randomly generated from the random package. We have 10 points, and then we have a set of points which indicates by V here. And then we use this random function. So that indicates when we have a point, let's see point A, we have two coordinates. And then each of the coordinates, we use a random number to generate a uniform integer from 0 to 10. So that indicates we will generate a scattered point, we generate 10 scattered points on a 10 by 10 grid. And then we can further plot it. So let's see, this figure shows the 10 points generated randomly to this 10 by 10 grid. See, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 0.10. So after we generate these 10 points, we will generate their distance matrix. Remember, when we apply our TSP model, we need to give the distance from any point. Here, we consider a very simple way to generate the distance matrix. We use this two norm. So if we have a point and a point J, then we use this two norm. Here is the xi minus xj square plus yi minus yj square, and take the square root. And after we apply this, we can calculate the cost C by this part. So this part is a little bit tricky because it is a 2D list. So we have this double bracket. And then it tells us if we have i equals to j, that means the distance from the point to itself, it is zero. So there are two cases. And if we have i equals to j, the distance is zero. If we have i is not equals to j, then we will calculate the distance from location i to location j by this uh, two norm. So after we generate all this distance, we can provide the input to our programs. Now we consider how to convert our formula into the formats the solver can recognize. First step, definitely we need to import the package for mixed integer programming. And then typically, when we use Python to solve a optimization problem, we need to first create something called a model. Here, the model is an instance or a class which provide all the method and variables such that we can generate this programming problem. And then after we create this model, we will have our decision variables. Here, the decision variables x is the integer decision or binary. And then y is uh, integer decision from 1 to until n. So here, when we write the expression for y, we will use this uh, method called add variable. And then we put the variable type for x, which is binary, for y, which is integer. Later on, we will provide the boundaries for y and n for y. 
after we create the, the theory variables, then we will provide the objective to this optimization problem. Here we introduce two methods. One is called the minimize. Definitely you can have maximize based on the problem type. And then in our formulation, our objective is sigma ij for all xij cij. To implement this sigma operations in MIP package, they use a function called this xsum. This is equivalent to this sigma. We put xsum and then put cij and xij, which the cij is the parameters we introduced just now, and xij is the decimal variable we just uh, provide here. And then this is iterate for all i in v and j in v. So after we define the objective, we can provide all this constraint to the problem. So here in MIP package, we create a constraint with some expression. Let's see, uh, for example, take this one. Uh, we will have a sigma operations, xij for all j is not equal to i, and then summation of this equals to one. Let's see how we implement this. We first use the x sum to indicate the sigma operations, and then we put xij in it, given the range for the variables. So here we use this double equation mark to indicate this is a constraint. And then the entire expression with this uh, constraint. So the constraint that can be double equation mark, which indicates equal, or is greater or equal, or is smaller or equal. So these operators can create an expression as constraint, and then we put this constraint into our model by using plus equals, and then this one will be added to the model. So similarly, we can generate another conservation law where I because the j belongs to one, uh, equals to one. So after these two lines, we can provide the conservation law for the problem. And then remember in our introduction of the model, we discussed about the subtor elimination constraint, and then which is this part. So in short, remember that we have yj is greater or equals to yi plus n plus one xij minus n. Okay, so after we have expression, we put it into our model. And then later on, here it should be big N. And then we can give this constraint for the integer range from 1 to n. And finally, we guarantee that y0 equals to 1. So this gives all the constraints to our problems. And finally, we will use a method called optimize, and then the problem can be solved. So let's see how the results look like. After we solve the problem, we will check if there is a solution. So the number of solution is stored in this variable, called number of solutions. So if this uh, solution number is greater uh, or equal to one, then we will have a solution. So if there is a solution, first we want to print out what is the total distance or the TSB length. And then we will print out the sequence. Here uh, we use Y to indicate the order. After we print the sequence, you can see we have 10 cities. And then the sequence will be from initial point, which is city 0, and then city 9, city 7, city 3, city 8, blah, 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 until finally reach city 1, and then go back to city 0. And then the total distance from the two norm is calculated to be 36.87. And then we will plot out all the cities and then together with the route, the TSP tour is determined by our xij equals to one. So we enumerate all possible xij's. If it is equals to one here to avoid the small calculation errors, we just put a threshold here. So this tells us if xij greater than 0 0.9, it indicates that there's a path from city i to city j in the TSP tour. So after we enumerate all possible x, we can see the solution looks like this. This is a pretty good TSP tour. You can see the very efficient. There's no easy ways we can see from our eyes that can be improved because this is already the optimum solution we can find through the solver. Now let's uh, further solve the VRP problem with uh, similar settings. Definitely the first step is to install the MIP package. Here in your colab, 
As long as you install once, it will be saved in your temporal memory. So there's no need to always install MIP package. It takes some time. I put this installation command here just to guarantee that if you use different packages independently, if you use different notebook files independently, and there's no need to worry about if it is if the MIP package has been installed or not. It will always check first. So similarly, we will generate some input data when we have our VIP problem. Remember, a slightly different point is we have a dpod. Remember, we have dpod index is zero. So the array is our dpod. And then one to n is our customers. So here we plot the dpod with a red square. And then we plot plot normal customers with just a blue dot. And then to indicate the demand, here we generate random demand from one to three on 10 customer points. And then we can plot the demand as the scale of the dot size. So the larger of the dot size, the higher of the demand. So here you can see this is our D part, and then we have 10 demand points, and then the, the biggest circle indicates the demand is 3, the smallest circle indicates the demand is 1, and then there's an intermediate circle, the demand is 2. And then here we assume the capacity of our truck is 8, and then we calculate all the demand and then divide it by capacity to get the smallest integer greater than this value to get the total number of trucks we need. So here in this specific case, we need three trucks. So the distance we still use uh, two norm. And then the initialization of the distance matrix still C. Remember here, C has a n plus one dimension because we have a D part. And then we need the distance from the D part to each point as well. Okay, so let's see how we convert this mixed integer programming in format that the solver can recognize. The first step here, we introduce this package MIP, and later on, we will use iteration tools called combinations. This is to enumerate all the possible subset given a big set. So similarly, the first step is always create a model. Here we use MIP package. And then remember our formula, we only need the same variables for x, i, j, which is binary. And then our objective is the same, which we want to calculate the total summation of c, i, j, x, i, j for all i and j. And then the constraint for the conservation law, we have for the customers, we have the inflow and outflow to be one, which is exactly the same as our previous uh, formula. And then for the D part, we guarantee that the outflow and inflow, the total number of uh, flows are m. And then here for subtour elimination, remember our subtour elimination is given by enumeration of S set to non S set. And then we need to guarantee this value is greater or equal to the total demand in S and then greater our capacity. So here we enumerate all possible subset. First, we introduce notation, which is iteration tool provided the combination function. This can guarantee that we can enumerate all possible subset from the customers. So here we exclude zero the D part to indicate this is a subset of customers. Okay, and then after we get the one sample of the subset, let's see it is S, and then we use this uh, NS to indicate this is not in the S subset, so which indicates the outside part of S. Then the demand within this uh, subset S on the right hand side of the constraint, we calculate the total sum over S. And then we can have this uh, constraint using the sigma operations where our x, i, j for i from S and then for our j from uh, not S. And then we guarantee that the summation should be greater or equal to the ceiling function. The parameters is a demand divided by the capacity. So here we can provide all the constraints to the problem and then now we are able to do the optimization. We just use optimize. So after we finish the optimization, you can uh, print out the solution. First, definitely we want to know about the total distance. So here in this specific case, our total objective is 54.32. 
And then remember our m equals to three. So we will have uh, three outflows and three, three outflows and three inflows to the depot. Here you can see from the depot, we have three tours. This is tour one, TSP tour two, and TSP tour three. Actually, this is uh, go to point three and then go back directly. So here we can double check the solution, which is very interesting. Remember our capacity is eight. So here you can see the demand. Uh, this is two, this is one, this is one, this is two, this is one. So this total demand is seven, which is less than eight. And then this demand is two, one, or this demand is three, two, three. So the demand is exactly eight. And then the, finally the demand point here is three. So we can just use three trucks to finish all the shipments.